Hi guys and welcome to Toby's Blogs. Um, back again because I had a request from who was it? It was blah 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 M the Who B H U about doing some acting on my blog. So I thought I would show you some, maybe kind of. Mm -hmm. But also try and um, promote my other skills as well because I also do writing, um, and I've um, in the middle of writing a novel at the moment. It's a fantasy novel. Uh, I've been writing for about two years, and um, this is a recent scene, um, a recent chapter that I've written, um, going back, and uh, this is quite a dramatic kind of. Um, terrifying, kind of horrifying kind of scene in the book um, and I thought I might share it with you um, going from the dialogue that's on the uh, in the book um, and it's about um, we have these noble families um, that are the Del Toras, the Vangars, the Dukovics the, and the I can't remember myself Dukovics and or whatever, doesn't matter. There's five families there's, yeah, five families, and they're all noble families, and they used to be in charge of the land, and they used to terrorise the land before the kings and queens came in, and they hate the monarchy, and they want to get them want to get the monarchy back because the monarchy stole their reign or whatever, that kind of thing. So the, the evil guys are the noble families, and this scene basically is of um, one of the nasty, one of the nasty leaders of the family, one of the families of the Fays, is Pathtar of the Fae, and this is what this uh, chapter is about. And that he doesn't like the wizard who's going on a quest um, to try and save the villagers that have been stolen. And so the evil guy is stealing these villagers from the villages nearby. And the wizard and a few guards have been sent to investigate and to get the people back. And so this is the scene where Pathtar of the Fae, leader of the Fae family, comes into the village to try and kill the wizard because in the past the wizard killed his family because he wanted to get the wizard wanted to get rid of all the evil and the Gwydion, Gwydion, wizard's name is called Gwydion and so hopefully with this you will be able to get the story and um, and the story we're going to start halfway through maybe the chapter when the Paftar arrives in the village so here we go <coughs> Uh, where are we? <laughs> this is not a good start, is it? Um, suddenly outside they heard a huge whooshing sound, noise, and the man came screaming out, Gwydion! Lost my place. Come out! Come out wherever you are! Gwydion went over to the window. In the square was standing Pathtar. He spoke again, Come out, old man! Face me, or are you are you too ashamed to show your face. Gwydion went to leave, but was stopped by Ingrid. Stop, Gwydion. It's obviously a trap. He wants to kill you. Pathtar walked around to spot, looking impatient. Oh, come on, wizard. Don't disappoint me. All right, if you will not come out, I'll have to have a little spot. Paftar looked all over the house and flung open the door with magic and a woman was standing there in the door in a sort of trance. Paftar beckoned her with his magic and she walked towards him. She reached him and he pulled her hair back. Pulled her hair back behind her shoulders. He spoke. What a little pretty thing you are. Such an innocent looking face. With stunning eyes and beautiful lips. And as for the rest of you, yes, yes, I like you. A man rushed towards forward screaming, Get your hands off my wife! Pastar raised his hands with a disgusted look on his face. Excuse me? 
get your hands off my wife. Pafta threw the man to the floor. Get your hands off my wife. What? The man remained silent. Pafta raised the man up and threw him to the ground even harder. Get your hands off my wife. What? Shouted Pafta. Get your hands off, off, off my wife, sir. Pafta's not that's better. You need to know your place, little man. He turned to the back to back to the woman and eyed up her body again, stroking her body. The man got up and ran towards Pathtar, who raised his hand to strike him. Oh dear little man, bad mistake. And with one throw Pathtar with Pathtar's hands, the man burst into dust. Pathtar smiled. I'm so sorry, madam, but your husband just had no respect for his betters. Now there's something I cannot stand. He walked around to the woman, eyeing her up, and shouted, Gwydion, come out of your hiding place. I'm going to have to do something truly abhorrent. Ingrid held Gwydion back. We need to regroup. Zenon sent a message to your guards, to the group, and we'll move in in a pincer movement towards Paftar. It is no good, Ingrid. We can't fight them. They are too strong, said Sinan in a defeated tone. Ingrid sent one of the king's guards round to the troops. Paftar then said, oh, Very well then, it's time to have some fun. Paftar undressed the lady in front of him, and she was standing there with no clothes on. She was totally unaware of anything that was happening to her. Paftar walked around her, and caressed her naked body, and flung her to the ground. He then got on top of her and started to fuck her in the middle of the square. <laughs> um, where were we? Blah, 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 blah. Whilst doing the act, Pafta said, This is no fun, it's like fucking a corpse. With that, he released the woman from her trance, and she began to scream and scream as Pafta raped her. The hall of Igrion, to the village they're in, was filled with terrifying screams. Paftar grabbed her neck and said, Shut up, you little bitch and enjoy it. I am much better than your dead husband. Oh, didn't you know? Yes, I killed him. Anyway, you have gone up in the world, darling. You've been fucked by a noble. Better that than a peasant you married. The girl screamed in agony at being raped and the loss of her husband. Gwydion could not stand it much longer and emerged out of the house. Pathtal smiled. Ah, old man, finally you show yourself. I'm so sorry, but I'm a bit busy at the moment. Unhand that poor girl. She's suffered enough. No, she hasn't. Let her go at once. Gwydion threw Pathtal across the square. The girl got up and started to run towards Gwydion. Paftar got on said, How dare you! And clenched his fists at the running girl's neck, which snapped as she fell to the ground, dead. Gwydion was furious. Why did you have to kill her for? She, she was a poor, innocent girl. Because you didn't show me any respect. You need to remember it. I am a noble, and you are nothing. Never strike me, as I am your better. Gwydion approached Pathtar. You've got what you've wanted. I'm here. What do you want with me? <laughs> Why, to kill you, of course. Pathtar threw Gwydion across the square, turning him around and around until he hit the floor. Pathtar, Pathtar did up his trousers and walked over to Gwydion. Gwydion waited till the last moment before propelling Pathtar across the square. Paftar was now very angry 
and his anger filled up inside him till his face turned red and his body turned red and then he started growing his face started to turn into scales and his body had grown to an enormous size and his whole body changed shape into a red dragon he looked at Gwyn and blasted him with a fiery breath Gwyn held back the flames but his magic with his magic but struggled against the strength of the flames in the end, the flames were too much and consumed Quidin, who screamed in agony as his whole body was burnt to a cinder. Now, where are we? Oh, blah, 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 blah. Paftar sopped, stopped when the flames and Quidin's body was black and charred, but still alive. Ingrid, who was in charge of the other village, not this one, I think, maybe not. Anyway, he's in charge of a village. Ingrid, where were we? Let's see, reading a story and I've lost my place. Change Gwyn and Hamlet. Bath tile, stop the flames. Ingrid, watching the whole thing from the window, rummaged through Gwyn's bag and found wormwort, which was a deadly poison. She grabbed it and ran out to the square with her bow and arrow. Paftar laughed. Ah, you little bitch of Tenegan has come to save the day. You're a dead man, Paftar. I struck you once and I will strike you again. She raised her bow and fired it and the arrow bounced off him as dragon's skin was a hundred times harder than that of armour. Paftar screamed, How dare you! And with this, Ingrid fired an arrow straight into his mouth. With the arrowhead dipped in worm's ward. Oh dear. Paftar laughed. <laughs> you stupid little bitch. Your stupid attempts have done nothing. I'm going to kill you. Suddenly Paftar started coughing. <laughs> and suddenly his appearance changed back more. <laughs> You little bitch! I've given you a dose of worms, Wart. I hope you enjoy it. Paftar screamed out. Uh, suddenly found out he had no breath and was silenced. He fell to the ground and disappeared. Ingrid ran over to Gwydion, whose body was smoking. He was weak and close to death. Suddenly the, fire, the, 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 the skies were filled with squawks of a phoenix. It was Pegasus, Maggie's pet phoenix. He swooped down and landed next to Gwydion. He stared at him and he rose his hand and stroked it. The bird came closer and began to cry. The tears landed on Gwydion's face and suddenly in a huge fuss of light Gwydion's body was cured. Ingrid was amazed. How is this possible? Phoenixes are birds of fire. They are born from the flames and die in the flames. Their magical tears have the power to heal small wounds and reverse the effects of magic, said Gwydion getting up from the floor. Ingrid helped him up. I gave Paftar a good, good dose of wormswort. You think he is dead? I doubt it, Ingrid. Paftar is Vladimir's closest friend. I do not believe he will let him die. Torin and the soldiers joined Gwydion and Ingrid, and they all headed out of Igrion and straight towards Mithgar, which was less than thirty minutes away. Okay, so that is a little bit of my book. Um, that I've been writing and um, a bit of acting and a bit of scene so I hope you enjoyed listening to this book and I hope you're not too bored um, leave comments down below what you thought about my book and whether you like it and whether you think it was good or not thank you and goodbye